All right, let's go ahead then and do Harris. I'll bring in the witness. And then Ms. Mr. Flanagan, are you aware of another jailer? Uh, yes, Dwayne Miller. Okay. I will bring in this jailer then. And send them to a breakout. All right, I'm ready. Oh, Miss White, please start your camera. Oh, wait, you can't. I'll be, I forget about my security measures. <laughs> All right, you can't. Now you can. All right, this is case number. <clears throat> two two four four eight five six zero one. The people of the state of Michigan versus Raymond Rico Harris. The defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for pretrial conference appearances, please. For the record, your honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Mr. Raymond Harris. Mr. Harris, when you're able to do so, sir, please unmute and tell the judge your full name. Raymond Rico Harris. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Today is the day set. Oh, Miss Miss Ritter, I'm sorry. Did you have a complaint to put her name on the record? I didn't, Judge. I apologize. Your Honor, I do have the complainant witness present via Zoom this morning. Ms. White, can you unmute yourself and state your name for the court, please? Kimberly White. All right. Today is the day set for pretrial conference. The complaining witness is present. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, so the people did have an opportunity to speak with the complainant witness this morning in the breakout room. Uh, Ms. White did advise me that she no longer wishes to prosecute this matter. Um, and I'm going to ask her for the record. Ms. White, uh, were you Hold threatened? On, before you even ask her, let's go in the breakout room. Um, I'm going to I'm going to bring the court. I want the court reporter and all counsel and the witness in the breakout room. Oops. Why is my court reporter not? Oh, because I just put a, let me see, that's number 10. And then I need to do the, the witness was already. Miss White, um, yes, can you tap on your screen and see if you see four squares that's directing you to go to a breakout room? Yes. All right, please join that breakout room. We're going to number uh -oh, it disappeared. Okay. Do it again. You should be able to do it again. And I've had an opportunity to speak with the complaining witness in the breakout room. And um, I'm going to say something before I um, move forward. So based upon the information that was given in the breakout room and the fact that Ms. White indicated that she didn't call the police, but the police happened upon them and they stopped. Um, that says a lot, first of all. It says that so much was going on that the police saw that they needed to intervene. Um, as I indicated in the breakout room, this case is probably not properly before this court because there was a relationship previously between the individuals. Um, I'm gonna just make this statement about domestic violence. Um, I, I'm very saddened that Ms. White has decided not to go forward uh, with 
with her allegations and, and the reasons that she indicated why she didn't want to go forward. Um, I think that is a, um, unfortunately, that is unfortunately um, what many individuals, and I am not making a statement as to Mr. Harris's guilt. I'm not making a statement as to Mr. Harris's guilt. I'm making a statement regarding uh, domestic violence and victims of domestic violence. And that is unfortunately what many victims of domestic violence do. And it is also unfortunate that an individual would look at the court system on a case where they're, they were accusing, an individual was accused. So it sounds like to me though, Ms. Stevens, Ms. Ritter, so this is the point that I'm getting ready to make. Based upon what the witness said in the, in the breakout room, it sounds like to me that her testimony is not even necessary. It sounds to me that there were some police officers who vowed to protect and serve, and they saw a situation where they decided to intervene in protecting and serving, and they intervened. She didn't call them, and it sounds like she didn't want them to be called, which again, is unfortunate if what Mr. Harris is accused of actually happened. So I'm indicating to the people that perhaps Ms. White isn't even necessary based upon what she said in the breakout room. Um, and I'm gonna leave that to the people. Uh, but it sounds to me like the very reason this particular case sounds to me like the very reason that the law was changed. And I know the law was changed prior to you, Ms. Ritter, becoming a prosecutor. Um, but I remember a day when if the, if the alleged victim did not want to proceed, then the case would not go forward until someone was severely beaten. Legs had to be amputated. And then they said they didn't want to go forward and the people protested it and the law was changed where you could go forward without the complaining witnesses cooperation if you had other independent testimony that could prove the case. I'm saddened that Ms. White feels like coming to court is an inconvenience to her life. I'm saddened by that. Nonetheless, um, Ms. Ritter, do the people think that they are able to proceed? Because otherwise, I might just send it over to Judge Garrett and let him make the decision. So, Your Honor, given the information from Ms. White, I would I would honestly leave that to the uh, DV prosecutors to make that decision, Your Honor. Um, I, just just because it's a it's a more a uh, specialized unit that they deal with that that can make those determinations on what evidence they will need because I don't I don't um, necessarily deal with domestic violence situations. I agree. I'm going to transfer the case to Judge Garrett. Um, notwithstanding the complaining witnesses' indication that she does not wish to go forward, I'll let the domestic violence judge and the domestic violence prosecutor. Um, make that decision on their own. Um, Mr. Flanagan, I'm going to call the judge myself instead of you. Okay.
I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Mr. Flanagan. Yes, Your Honor. Um, go ahead and take the file next door, but I still haven't talked to um, Judge Garrett. Go ahead and take the file next door, though. Um, okay. Deputy, can can I get the deputy on Harris? Yes, ma'am. Deputy, oh. deputy um, go ahead and, and log Mr. Harris into Judge Garrett. Austin. Yes, ma'am. Judge Austin Garrett. Austin Garrett. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Miss White, you don't you don't have to appear in Judge Garrett's courtroom as you've indicated you don't want to proceed. Uh, but if you decide to appear, your your uh, Judge Garrett's Zoom login number is almost identical to mine. It's three three nine. I'm sorry, it's three three eight instead of three three nine. But uh, as you've already indicated that you do not wish to proceed, you do not have to log in. I'm sorry, you you're muted. I can, so I can just leave, log out? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, are the people ready on Raymond Harris? It's a matter was transferred from Judge Bryant this morning. No, Your Honor, I would need a moment. Okay. Uh, Attorney Roberts, you need to speak with Mr. Harris? Sure, Your Honor. Thank you. Judge Navis, go ahead. The, sorry? The defendant, Harris, is name. Oh, it's Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. Harris, H A R I S. Your Honor, would you be able to kindly provide me with a case number? Case number is 220 448 5601. Thank you, Your Honor. One moment. All right, we're ready on uh, Harris. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so the court calls the people versus Raymond Rico Harris. It's case number 220-448-5601. Matters before the court today for a pre-trial conference. May I have your appearances, please, starting with the prosecution. Carolyn Solari, key number 86651 for the people. Thank you. Your appearance, Attorney Roberts. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did you call the case? I did. <laughs> Andrew Roberts appearing on behalf of Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, can you state your name if you did not do so already, please? Raymond Rico Harris. Thank you. All right, thank you. And Attorney Solari, what is the people's pleasure in this case at this time? Your Honor, the people respectfully ask that this court set a final pretrial date. All right, thank you, Attorney Roberts. Um, Your Honor, I believe there's some procedural history um, that this matter was in the Honorable Judge Bryant's courtroom and that there was some indication, I don't know if this was on record or not, but I have information from my colleague that uh, the complainant did not wish to proceed. And so I would just ask if the people have that information and are proceeding in the absence of the complainant. All right. People have indicated that they want to set this matter for a final pretrial, but I'm not one to assume. So what 
the people are proceeding with or without the complaining witness at this time, Attorney Solari. Your Honor, the people would need an independent corroboration that the complainant does not wish to proceed. And in that event, we would proceed anyway without the complainant, should she not want to proceed. And I can confirm that. Okay. So um, what the court's going to do is this. We're, we'll set the case for a final pre -trial. That'll be on the, let's say, the 8th of June. Let's make that at 9 a.m. Uh, court does want the complaining witness present if the people are proceeding with that individual's assistance. Um, if not, then the people are entirely, uh, you know, within their authority to can continue without that person being present. But uh, court does want them present if they are proceeding with that individual's assistance and will move the matter forward as needed on that date and time. That is June 8th. That is at 9 a.m. That'll be via Zoom. Anything further from the people? No, thank you, Your Honor. Attorney Roberts. No, Your Honor, thank you. All right. Mr. Harris, we'll see you in a few weeks. You have a good day and be well.